so after doing the brachial plexus the cords in relation to the clavicle the subclavian artery vein which is become the axillary artery now the next part is the clavi pectoral fascia clavi pectoral fascia so clavi means clavicle pectoral means pectoral region so this is a modified deep fascia or modification of the deep fascia of the thorax which is present between the pectoralis minor and the clavicle so its attachments is the clavicle and is the pectoralis minor muscle as we know this is the upper border of the pectoralis minor muscle this is the lower border of the pectoralis minor muscle so there is a gap between the clavicle and the medial or this upper border of the pectoralis minor so in this area there are chances that the cords of the brachial plexus and the axillary artery now it is accompanied by the axillary vein also so medially there is the axillary vein and similarly from the outer border of the first rib this is a bone vein now it is called the axillary vein and this is the axillary vein lies medial to it and then in the arc in the axilla also it lies in the medial aspect and going into the arc so this is the medial is the axillary vein axillary artery lies there so between the clavicle and the pectoral minor so there is a chances of the injury of the axillary vein artery and the three cords of the brachial plexus so in order to protect it so there is a thickening of the deep fascia is there which lies over it so that is called the clavi pectoral fascia so this clavi pectoral fascia it covers the pectoralis minor muscle so come from the lateral border and it split into two laminas one covering the superior surface of the pectoralis minor muscle and one layer goes deep to it on its upper border this fascia again fuses so it invests the pectoralis minor muscle coming from the deep fascia of the arc or deep fascia from the axilla and it is continued towards the upper region so we can say here that if we make this is the pectoralis minor muscle and this is the deep fascia coming from axilla and covering this deep surface and the superficial surface of the pectoralis minor and on its upper border it again becomes one layer and this one layer is called the clavi pectoral fascia now it will run from the pectoralis minor towards the clavicle that's why it is called the clavi pectoral fascia so this is the clavicle bone so when it re runs towards the clavicle this is the superior attachment so attachment first is the superior so when we trace it superiorly or in the upper part what we see that in one layer it is running towards the under surface of the clavicle because you know in the middle part of the clavicle there is a insertion of the on the inferior surface of the clavicle we have done this subclavius muscle so subclavius muscle is below the middle part of the clavicle so this clavicular fascia runs towards the clavicle and it also
covers the subclavius insertion in the subclavian groove on the inferior surface of the clavicle and then it is attached to the clavicle. It is attached to the clavicle. As it invests the whole of the subclavius muscle, so it reaches up to the first rib also. So this is the first rib. So from here it is attached to the first rib. The costal cartilage of the first rib. So that is how we do the section of the so in this way it covers the subglavian vessels and the brachial plexus cords. Then its medial attachment. So when we trace it medially, then it is attached to the costal cartilages of the first, second and the third ribs. Plus it blend with the deep fascia covering the intercostal upper intercostal space. So it is fused with them or merged with the deep fascia of the upper part of the thorax. And here also it is attached to the intercostal spaces covered by the muscles and the fascia. Laterally. If we trace it literally, what we see that it is attached to the coracoid process. As coracoid process is the insertion of the pectoralis minor. So it is inserted over the or attached to the coracoid process laterally. And sometimes from the coracoid process up to the under surface of the clavicle this part of the clavicular fascia is become thickened and is called the costocoracoid ligament costocoracoid ligament when it is thickened between the coracoid process and the clavicle it may be thickened in some part again when it is thickened it is protecting the vessels and the cords of the brachial plexus here which is a vulnerable point for it. Then inferior. When we trace it inferiorly, what we see that it is continuous with the deep fascia of the front of the upper part of the thorax. Or it is traced into the axilla. So as we know the axilla is the arm pit. So this arm pit is maintained by this is the thorax later surface and this is the axilla. This is the skin below the skin is the superficial fascia that is the yellow color patch in cut section and then below this there is a deep fascia. So deep fascia of the far side of the thorax is continuous with the axilla and then the same fascia covers the arm. So as this fascia belongs to the axilla or the armpit, so this is called the axillary fascia. So this one sheet of the clavicular fascia when we trace it literally then this fascia is covering the contents of the axilla and this fascia then it is attached to the dome of the axillary fascia. So this is the axilla, this arm it is concavity is maintained by this attachment of this. This is the deep fascia of the axillary fascia of the axilla and then this clavicular fascia literally is attached to the convexity of the axillary fascia and it maintains the arm pitch. So the stretching of this fascia, clavicular fascia, 
maintains the contour of the or convexity of the armpit or the axilla. So that is another function of the clavicular fissure to maintain the convexity of the axillary fish. So this is how we do the attachments of the clavicular fissure fish. Now this clavicular fissure area. The next part comes the relations. So in the relation, first is the superficial relation, and then the deep. Superficial to this clavicular fascia, in the dissection part, in order to see this, first we have to remove the skin. Then we have to remove the superficial fascia. Then we see the clavicular petrol fascia. So skin and superficial fascia covers it. So that is lying in the superficial relation. When we remove it, below which lies whatever structure lying, they are coming into the deep relations. So in between the superficial and the deep relation, this clavicular fascia is pierced by four structures. You have to remember four things which pierce the clavicular fascia. What are these four structures which pierce the clavicular fascia? Number one is the cephalic vein. Cephalic vein pierces it. Second is the thoracoacromial artery. Thoracoacromial artery pierces it. Third thing, it is pierced by the lateral pectoral nerve. Lateral pectoral nerve, which we have seen that the branch of the lateral cord of the brachial vessel. Lateral pectoral nerve. And last is the lymphatics. So these structures, the PS4 structures, you have to remember: one artery, one vein, one nerve, and lymphatics. So nerve is the lateral pectoral nerve. So lateral pectoral nerve, as we know, it is the continuation of the lateral cord. So from the lateral cord, this arises from here. So lateral pectoral nerve goes up. It pierces clavicular fascia and comes up. And what lies above? Pectoralis major muscle. So this lateral pectoral nerve will enter into the deep surface of the pectoralis major and it will supply it. Plus it also gives the branch to the pectoralis minor also. It supplies both the muscle, lateral pectoral nerve supplies later, but the major as well as the minor. The second is the thoracoacromial artery. So, we, as we know, the thoracoacromial artery is the branch of the second part of the subclavian artery, and second part of the axillary artery lies below the pectoral spine. So, two branches of the second part. One is the thoracoacromial artery. So, it comes from the upper part of the second part of the subclavian artery. And it pierces the deep clavicular fascia. This is thoracoacromial. And after piercing, and so it comes up. So lateral pectoral nerve is also coming up. So thoracoacromial artery is coming up. And this thoracoacromial artery will divide into immediately into four branches. It divides into four branches. Thoracoacromial artery. And these four branches, the names of these four branches is depending upon where they are going. One is going towards the acromial process, so this is the acromial branch. Another is going towards the deltoid, so it is the deltoid branch. Another is going towards the clavicle, so it is the clavicular branch. And down which is coming towards the pectoral major, it is called the pectoral branch. So you have to remember four branches of the thoracoacromial artery. Then comes the cephalic vein. As we know, this is the lateral one third of the anterior border of the clavicle, and this is the acromion. So lateral one third of the clavicle gives origin to the deltoid muscle, and this deltoid muscle is inserted on deltoid tuberosity. So this is the deltoid muscle origin 
and insertion in the upper arm, in the lateral part, with the anterior border of the pec deltoid muscle. And we know this is the pectoral major muscle, its origin, and then from its origin it goes towards the insertion on the lateral lip of the biceptal group. So between the pectoralis major is tendon and the anterior border of the deltoid, there is a groove. This groove is called the deltopectoral groove. It is called the deltopectoral groove. And in this deltopectoral groove lies the Catholic vein, which is coming from lateral aspect of the arm, forearm, in the hand. And it remains laterally in the superficial fascia. It runs up. And then it runs in the deltopectoral groove. The Catholic vein starting from the thumb side of the hand. So this Catholic vein lies in the deltopectoral groove. It reaches up. And here it pierces the deep fascia. That is the clavicle fascia. It pierces the Catholic vein. And this Catholic vein then opens into the sub into the axillary vein here. Because axillary vein lies deep to the clavicular fish. So this is the Catholic vein opening into the end. And the last is the lymphatics. Now lymph nodes they also accompany the vein. And the lymph nodes they are also present along the axillary vein also, deep to the clavicular fascia. So along with the Catholic vein, the lymphatics, they also pierce the clavicular fascia and they open or they drain into the subclavicular group of the lymph nodes around the axillary vein. So they are the apical group of the lymph nodes. We are apical. So this is how we do the four structures pierce the clavicular fascia. So in the diagram, how we can show the clavicular fascia it is pierced by four structures. First is the deep relation. So when we remove this, when we cut the clavicular fascia from here and here and remove it, what lies below is the medial most, medial most structure below is the Subclave axillary vein, and this axillary vein is surrounded by here medially axillary vein, which is surrounded by the apical group of the lymph, lymph nodes. Apical group of the lymph nodes, which are interconnected, and little to the axillary vein, what lies here? Axillary artery. And this is the first part of the axillary artery between the clavicle and the upper part of the pectoris minor. And these yellow ones, they are the cords of the pectoral plexus. And we know what is the relation of the three cords with the first part of the clavicle, of the first part of the axillary artery. That is, laterally lies the lateral cord and the Posterior cord. So, lateral cord is lateral. Posterior cord is also lateral. But the medial cord is posterior in position or deep to the first part of the axillary artery. So, this is the lateral most is the lateral cord. Then comes the posterior cord. This is also lateral. Both are lateral. And this is the medial cord which is posterior or deep to the axillary artery. So exactly we form the three cords in relation to the first part of the axillary artery in this diagram. And now the four structures we have to pierce. First is the, this is the lateral cord. So lateral cord will give rise to the lateral pectoral nerve which will pierce the clavicular region and come up. And 
this supplies the pectoralis minor plus it also supplies the pectoralis major muscle which is lying above and covering it. So the pectoral is major. So little pectoral nerve supplies both the muscles. Then the artery will get the thoracic chromium artery. It pierces the lateral fascia and comes above. And here it divides into four branches. This is how we show the thoracic abdominal artery divided into four branches. Then we show the Catholic vein lying in this thoracic deltopetral groove. And from here, this Catholic vein is now piercing the clavicular fascia and opens into sub axillary vein. So this is the Catholic vein we show. And fourth thing is the along with the, there lies the lymphatic lymph nodes along the Catholic vein. So they pierce the clavicular fascia and the lymphatic they open into apical group of lymph nodes. Like this. So this small diagram will show all the relations as well as the structure piercing the thoracoacromal clavicular fascia. So this is the axillary vein. Axillary artery, the first part of the axillary artery and the cords, all in relation. So this small diagram will depict everything about this. Last is the function. So first function of the clavicular fascia is the protection of the neurovascular bundle. That is the great subgiving uh, the axillary vein, axillary artery apical group of the axillary lymph nodes and the three cords of the brachial plexus with their branches. So that is the function. Second function is that it pulls the axillary fascia and maintains the arm pitch, contour of the arm pitch. So that is how we finish with the what is called the clavipectoral fish.